In this presentation, we will cover the grid characteristic that has the greatest effect on grid performance, grid ratio. The ratio of a grid not only affects the ability of the grid to clean up or remove scatter, but also requires the radiographer to compensate for the grid and, and informs the radiographer how likely the grid is to cause repeats if mispositioned. Before we begin the topic at hand, I want to take a few minutes discussing the concept of grid cutoff. Grid cutoff occurs when the width of the grid is angled relative to the central ray or when the central ray is angled across the width of the grid. Confused? Perhaps this will help. Here is a grid and the length is defined as the dimension that follows the length of the grid strips not the longest dimension of the grid. All grids have a line printed on their cover indicating the length. In a table bucky, the length of the grid runs parallel to the table's length. In an upright bucky, the length of the grid generally is oriented vertically. Angulation of the central ray is allowed so long as it runs along the length of the table or vertically in the case of the upright bucky. The width of the grid runs perpendicular to the length. Any angulation of the grid or the central ray will cause the grid to interfere with primary radiation reaching the image receptor. To illustrate this point, let's drop a single vertical ray at the center line of the grid. It easily penetrates the interspace material without a problem. Tilt the grid to the right 10 degrees and the line is stopped by the lead in the grid. Not only this line would be stopped by the grid, all of the primary radiation would be stopped by the lead in the grid as well. If the central, central ray were angled across the grid, the same thing would happen. This problem is called grid cutoff, where the grid stops the radiation that should normally reach the image receptor. Let's bring the grid back to perpendicular and then angle it to the left. Notice the cutoff occurs with this angulation as well. So when doing portable exposures or shoot through lateral hips, the width of the grid must be held perpendicular to the central ray or grid cutoff will occur. Grids have three characteristics. They are ratio, frequency, and design. Of the three characteristics, ratio determines the grid's effectiveness in removing scatter, or grids require two to six times increase in MAS over non-grid exposures. The amount of MAS increase required is mainly affected by the ratio. Finally, grids require the radiographer to center, set precise SID, and set angles to prevent and set angles to prevent grid artifacts on the image. This too is mainly affected by ratio. Just note, all the graphics in this presentation are drawn to scale. So the 6 to 1 grid that is projected on the screen will reflect that ratio if, me ratio if measured. As pointed out in previous presentations, the grid is made up of alternating strips of radiolucent interspace material and radio-opaque lead strips. Let's watch here as the grid is built. Let us concentrate our attention on the first four interspaces and lead strips. Here are the first four strips separated from the grid and magnified. Measuring the height of the grid, we find that the height is 6 units high. 
Since we are concerned with ratio, the actual measurement is unimportant. Important is that the interspace material is one unit thick, meaning that the height of the grid is six times higher than the thickness of the interspace material. Grid ratio is commonly expressed in units of height compared to interspace thickness, and the interspace thickness is always expressed as 1. So, a 6 to 1 grid will always be 6 times higher than the thickness of the interspace material. So here we have an example of a 6 to 1 grid. Let's draw some guidelines tangent to the top and bottom of our 6 to 1 grid. Another common grid ratio is 8 to 1. Note that it is 2 units high, higher than the 6 to 1 grid. 12 to 1 grids are commonly found in table buckies. Can you see this is twice as high as the 6 to 1 grid? A 16 to 1 grid is probably the highest ratio you'll encounter in radiologic imaging. It is twice the height of the 8 to 1 grid. This is an end view of a 6 to 1 and a 12 to 1 grid. For an x-ray to travel through the grid, it must be traveling from perpendicular to a maximum angle determined by the top of one strip and the bottom of the next strip. This angle is called the angle of obliquity. For a 6 to 1 grid, this angle is 9.46 degrees. Any ray traveling at an angle more than 9.46 degrees from vertical will be stopped by the lead strips of the grid. Or, if the grid is misaligned by more than 9.46 degrees from perpendicular, to the central ray, it will stop or cut off the primary radiation necessitating a repeat view. The ratio that I will use for comparison is the 12 to 1 grid. The 12 to 1 grid has a maximum angle of obliquity of 4.76 degrees. Since the angle of obliquity is one half that of a 6 to 1 grid, it will capture more scatter rays and require that the radiographer be even more precise in assuring that the grid is perpendicular to the central ray. The 12 to 1 grid requires so much precision in positioning that it is not used normally in portable imaging. The 12 to 1 and higher grid ratios are mostly used in fixed applications such as upright or table bucky systems. Here is a table of common grid compensating factors. If you were performing a view that required 3MAS non-grid, and you opted to perform it using a 12 to 1 grid, you would need to raise the MAS to 15 to maintain the same amount of, radi same amount of radiation measured at the image receptor. This formula can be used to compensate from one grid to another. It might be used to compensate a technique that works in a table bucky, that uses a 12 to 1 grid to a portable technique where a 6 to 1 grid might be more appropriate. Of all the grid characteristics, ratio has the greatest effect on the ability of a grid to remove scatter from a given image. With the increased ability to remove scatter comes the requirement of more precise positioning as ratio increases. If the, grid is angled, if the grid is angled across its width, it will interfere with the image and cause grid cutoff. Finally, grids increase patient dose by a factor of two to six times non-grid dose. So, the advantage of high ratio grids are, 
less scatter reaching the image receptor, and higher contrast resolution. The higher the ratio, the larger the dose to the patient and possibly the radiographer. High ratio grids are more subject, more subject to grid cutoff and mostly used in fixed applications where the orientation of the grid can be rigidly controlled. As one might expect, the low ratio grid has the opposite of the high ratio grid as far as its characteristics go. More scatter will make it through a low ratio grid, so the ability of the grid to produce images with high contrast resolution will be reduced. The compensation factors for low ratio grids are less, so patient dose will be reduced compared to high ratio grids. Low ratio grids can better tolerate misalignment of the central ray, so are well suited for portable and non-bucky aging. I'd recommend these grids not exceed an 8 to 1 ratio. Thank you for your kind attention. This will end my presentation.